Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We are excited to be with you these next 30 minutes and hope you feel the same way about us. I'm sure <laughs> they do, right? And who would not want to spend the next 30 minutes with us? That's what we're here for, to uh, <laughs> entertain, edify, and hopefully educate a little bit as well. <laughs> we're playing a game on today's we are? show. Well, well, we're some of us are. playing a game. It's called Who Can Guess What's in the Big Blue Bag? It's like shoes. It's Any heavy. guesses? Here, it's you can try down. it out and see. Can I feel the bag or is you that can. not allowed? That's okay. It's got a rounded shape. It reminds me of a ride from Cedar Point, kind of. It's not it's a ride. It's got a handle. It's not, it's the, look, it says Lake Erie, so it's, that's a good bag. That's Lake near Erie Cedar Shores Point. and Islands. It is an island in a bag. You add some water. There you go. You said sand. See, you thought it was sand. I said Check it, it originally came from sand. If you if you saw us earlier. Oh. Yeah. Originally came from sand. So that's what Mark's. That's a good clue. That's Mark's clue. It would not be very fair for me to participate in this game. I think that's a pun of some sort, but I'm not picking up on it. What's the opposite of fair? Lies. Unfair. In baseball and softball, what is the opposite oh, of fair? Oh, foul ball. Glass. Foul. Is it a turkey? A glass turkey? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. I'm we really will confused. just find out at the end of the show, so you must stay tuned. But we don't want you to stop guessing about the rest of the show. Some great opportunities coming up this month for you or someone you know, including basketball, photography, and more. But first, an opportunity to strengthen you spiritually with our scripture verse of the day. Andy? We're talking about family today. Good thing to talk about during the summer. Psalm 127, 3 through 5. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they are contend with their opponents in court. Well, family time is important, and with summer coming, hopefully you can plan at least a day trip away with your family. Well, recently Andy did just that with his family on a day trip to Cedar Point. Yeah, America's roller coast. It was a cold day. The bugs were out, but tell you what, there were very few lines, and we had a great time. I rode this ride when it was the tallest stand-up roller coaster in the country, and now Rougarou fastest orange coasters I've ever seen. That ride was much better than the stand-up version Mantis. I got to go on all my favorites including Millennium Force in the front row, but spent most of the day enjoying laughs. <laughs> now that Nathan's five and Anna's four, they could really enjoy the rides for the first time. The day is certainly filled with Fun. going into the day. We thought maybe we'd be done by dinner time, but the kids made sure we stayed till close and what will become a yearly tradition up in Sandusky. Where are we? Cedar Point. I want my teacher to keto that gave me ice cream. No, hey. What are you talking about? <laughs> Talk right. What was your favorite ride? What was your favorite ride? It goes up and down, up and down. Yes. The flying kite, was that fun, Anna? Yeah. Was that your favorite time, too? All right, now what are we on? Where are we going? What a fun day for the Lynch family. Now, don't forget, our auction is coming up, and pretty much every year we usually have a Cedar Point trip in that auction, which is a great family getaway and could be yours if you're the highest bidder. That auction is September 12th. And speaking of the auction, we are still thinking about this bag, playing our game, what is in the Lake Erie bag? Well, I'll give you a hint. One of the items has to do with Lake Erie. One of them maybe could have something to do with Lake Erie. Of course, if you were here and you could hold on to this, you'd realize how heavy it is. And we'll talk more about this in just a little bit. But right now we want to talk about photography, more than just photography, how photography can be used as a ministry. And I am joined by Michaela Clay, who uh, is going to talk to us about Heart Portrait. Heart Portrait is relatively new to the area and we have a kickoff coming up June 13th in Logan County for this special program. Tell me what Heart Portrait is all about. 
And what Heart Portrait is, is it is a photography-based program to where you can reach out to the community. It's completely free. There's no applications. There's nothing involved for anybody. Um, and it's pretty much an outreach to everybody to say, hey, if you can't afford to go get your pictures taken, come out, see us if you can't afford it come out and see us. There's gonna be a lot of other community members there to help kind of guide people into different things that they may need, food, clothing, um, hygiene products. We're gonna to try to really send out anybody in the community that wants to be within the outreach to come out and help out in this uh, program. When someone arrives to this, what should they expect? They should be expected to be greeted by um, one of our volunteers um, who's basically a concierge to them. What they're going to do is they're going to take them through from the beginning to the end um, with any of their needs that they might have, you know, kind of get to know them, find out where their needs might be. Do they need to go see a dentist? Do they need help with electric? Um, are they just there to have a good time? You know, because we're going to have some concerts and some other really awesome things going on. So, Micaela, this definitely sounds like a great opportunity in many realms, but your position actually is the director of photography. Yes. And photography itself is a big part of this. Why, why is it so important to add in this extra thing, taking a family picture, a professionally done family picture? A lot of people don't have the means to get family portraits done. Um, they can be very expensive. Um, they can be very time consuming. It's hard to find a really good place. Um, a lot of the studios aren't around that used to be around. So um, this in general is just something that you can say, hey, we're right here in your community center. Stop by for the day. You don't have to have an appointment. Mm -hmm. You can just show up. We have about five different ph um, photographers that have volunteered. So we're going to have them there to kind of help out. We're going to edit your photos. We're going to give you an eight by 10. And then we're going to also send you with the CD of your picture so that you can go print them out later too. So the opportunity to have all this, it's something that could be worth generally a couple hundred dollars is gonna be free to the public. And I would kind of feel like even beyond the monetary value, sending them home with their own picture is gonna have a lasting value as well. Do you agree? A hundred percent, yes. I mean, especially like I said, when you don't have the opportunity to do this for your family, and a lot of these people, it'll be the first time that they hang up a family portrait. Mm -hmm. And that's just something amazing and blessed by anybody to be able to say, we took part in that, we were able to help, and now you have a memory that's gonna last you an entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. So. All right, Michaela Clay, the Director of Photography with Heart Portrait. I will be at the event as well on the 13th and in Bell Fountain, so I look forward to seeing you there. It is mm -hmm. June 13th, and it is located at Union Station in Bell Fountain from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you are in the area, please come out and be a part of it. If you know someone in the area who you know could benefit from this, please spread the word. All right, now we're going to talk about something else that is coming up that is definitely for the athletes in the region, but it also has a biblical focus as well. There's a basketball camp taking place with a higher purpose than just sports. Mark is with Pastor Carl Johnson to talk about the upcoming Life Hoop basketball camp. Well, thank you, Jennifer. You know, in the summertime, there's plenty of different ways to try and keep the kids busy. Lots of different camps out there, including sports camps. And that's what we're here to talk about with Pastor Carl Johnson from New Life Church Lima. You guys have got a, a basketball camp coming up later this month, which the idea is not only to teach the youngsters about basketball, but to teach them about some much more important things, too. That's correct. Uh, we're teaching about the fundamentals of discipleship, how you can use it on a court, as well as implement it in your life uh, by our coaches. You know, and certainly all the time we hear about how important sports roles play and, you know, maybe it's misguided, maybe it, it can get out of whack with what we really need to be focused on, but this is a good way that you guys are using sports to reach kids. That's right. Uh, our campus total outreach is, uh, is not for, uh, is not for the, the expert or the novice. It's one of the camps that if your kids never play basketball, they could come and they could learn the fundamentals. Or if they they play basketball, we could take them up to the next level. It's one of those camps that meets all all range levels in, in sports. They're going to learn the fundamentals of basketball, but they're also going to learn the fundamentals of Christianity too. That's correct. Uh, so the, the great thing about this uh, program is that I have two evangelists that are coming from out of state 
who've actually played professional basketball, one in Australia and one in Europe. And God called them both out to, to minister and to be an evangelist uh, full time. One has started a program called Cross It Up, which goes out to inner city kids and he teaches basketball, teaches the skills, and also ministers to them in that capacity. One is an itinerant evangelist who says, hey, basketball is something that God gave me and I'm going to use it whenever he allows me to use it. So it's been very, he's been very helpful in that as this is year two going around. Pastor Carl Johnson from New Life Church Lima here talking about the Life Hoop Basketball Camp. It's coming up in June, the end of June, the 25th through the 27th? Correct. And uh, those dates are good because it's, uh, it's from 8 to 5 on Thursday and Friday. And Saturday we have it from 8 to 12 with a, a ceremony at the end, uh, giving medals and congratulating the students on, on their well done hard work. It's going to be at Lima Central Catholic High School, a great facility there and, you know, a good sized gym where you can get a lot of space, and a lot of instruction for those kids. And that's right. So also meals will be provided too as well for breakfast, a light breakfast and a lunch. We don't want to give them too, too <laughs> fed, but we're, we're going to be working them hard and uh, when they go home, they might be sore mom and dad. <laughs> Uh, cost associated with this camp? Yes, the cost associated is only $25 for the three days. And that, that includes everything. So if they just come with a, they don't even have to bring a basketball, just come in, in shorts and, and in basketball shoes and we're just ready to get started. What are you guys hoping to do with this camp? Uh, we're hoping this camp will be, uh, it'd be one of the great uh, uh, outreach of new life that reaches out to a community that we're not, we're not reaching. We, we, I have a passion for the loss. That's why this camp this campus came up, and I see it's something that, that Lima likes. Uh, kids love basketball. Kids love sports. So we want to bring a commonality that they know and bring Jesus into their focus. And I believe, as I say, uh, sportsmanship is a godly character. There's not much talked about in the Bible, but we see it a lot as far as Paul talks about it with the boxer. So we just want to we just want to bring that into focus to let them know that they can have godly character in practice and on the court. You can register at New Life Church International at the, the camp itself at LCC. How else can folks get more information? They can get more information through our Facebook page, which is Life Hoop Basketball Camp. If you just, uh, you just put that in the search bar, Life Hoop Basketball Camp, it'll come right up, and there's more registration details on that page. All right, thank you very much, Pastor Carl Johnson from New Life Church in Lima, talking about the 2015 Life Hoop Basketball Camp. Well, another movie special is coming up this week. Amber Chambers is here to give us a preview in today's Movie Minute. Thank you, Mark, and don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the show to find out what auction item is inside this bag. Now get ready to hang 10 during this month's family feature called Cutback, where the star of our show, Luke, dreams of becoming a pro surfer. And his best friend, Casey, seems to be the only one who believes Luke can make it. While Luke and Casey decide to party it up, Luke's dad catches him breaking curfew and coming home drunk. Will this put an end to Luke's plans of trying out for a spot on the local surf team? As part of Luke's punishment, he promises his mom that he will attend youth group at her church. With best friend Casey by his side, the two make some new church friends. After agreeing to see a movie with their newfound comrades, tragedy strikes. Leaving Luke wondering how God can allow this horrible thing to happen and how it could be what's best for him. Join me June 13th at 10 p.m. to see if Luke is able to move past the brokenness he's holding on to and to trust God's plan. And family and the church, those are the keys on this month's update with Bill Harris. But as Bill says, the family and the church are under attack. Zach is with Bill talking about how we, as the body of Christ, can fight back. Well, after a bit of hiatus and some time away, Bill Harris once again is joining us today on Faith and Friends. And Bill, thank you for being on and we're so happy to have you back. It's good to be back always. Well, once again, you've brought a variety of topics uh, to the teaching board and you are going into June with several different topics. And we're going to talk about a couple of them today, starting with the church and the family mm -hmm. and the uh, power within them, and then also how they are being under attack by society today. Very much so. And these are two powerful institutions that make for the bedrock of society, both the family and the church. Strong families produce a strong society and strong church. And of course, the reverse is also true. The family under attack because we're redefining the family mm -hmm. and redefining it away from God's original intent and purpose. Anytime we move away from what God is calling for at any level of society, it's going to bring in negative consequences. Mm. It has nothing to do with hating people, being bigoted, or anything of that nature. This country was founded on those principles. We're moving away from them, and the consequences are sure to follow. Well, and you're 
you pull out your own quote in front of the White House. It was the, uh, the White House Conference on, Conference families. on yeah. families. You spoke there and you said, wherever this country is headed on the road to moral decline, families will be the first to get there. And we, we can see that because again, it's the bedrock of society. Mm -hmm. And what happened, you know, my bishop used to say, what happens in the home ultimately affects society. Mm. Look at what's happening in the home today. Look at what's happening in society. You take kids today, you can even take like that, let's take that motorcycle gang that, that, that yeah. committed all those shootings and killings last month. Uh, they were, the, the, one of the leaders was talking about how that many men join that organization because they get love and a sense of belonging in that mm. organization that they did not get at home. Right. Th there's a perfect example right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. We've got to change that. You yeah. know, it's not putting people down, it's commuting, c c communicating and conveying the truth in love. That's how we have to do it. Well, and so you dive into the family first and you start at the very beginning mm -hmm. with the first marriage, of course, Adam. First marriage with Adam and you can see that when God put him to sleep, he pulled a rib out of him, the first operation that took yeah. place. And he used that rib to create the woman. And when, when she came through the garden, he looked and she must have been a knockout. He says, whoa, <laughs> whoa, woman. And right away, it, God begins to design the situation where there's a one flesh relationship between mm -hmm. them. No other relationship on the face of these, this earth is characterized as a one flesh relationship. And how he gave them uh, oneness in moral responsibility to multiply and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. Men with men can't do that. Women with women can't do that. It's a violation of what God is calling for. And anytime we violate his laws, it creates negative consequences. Hmm. Right, and you're not talking about uh, the man may be in charge, but it does not mean there's not equality there. And you go into horizontal equality in, quote, Galatians, where Paul is talking about, for you all one in Christ Jesus. That's true. And there's neither male nor female because God recognizes us as equal partners. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is on the horizontal level. And then on the vertical level, he gives a chain of command, which, mm -hmm. is, which is necessary, just like you would have it at work. Man, head of the woman. Well, God, head of the man and man, head of the woman, woman, head of the children. Mm -hmm. And. You, you look at that to say that it, it does not mean that man is a bully or a dictator because he's the head. He is a love head. He is a benevolent king in his home. His wife is the queen mm -hmm. and his children comprise his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And he is to take care of his, his family. And this is why God said, man, you are to love your wife as I love the church and gave myself for it. Mm -hmm. Love your wife as you love your own body. What a command. Mm -hmm. No man can keep that of his own, by the way, Zach. You need to have God's love coming through you so that you can love your wife. You hmm. can't do that. You cannot fulfill that <laughs> command on your own. Right. It takes the love of, so you have to be submissive for the love of God to work through you and touch your wife that way. Hmm. Well, in terms of equality, you are talking about equality, the very basis, the foundation that both were created by God both were created in God's image and both were, cr were created with moral responsibility. And that is to be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and that, that bespeaks what we are saying in society today, what we're doing, exploiting sex and how that is, it has now become sexploitation and the mm -hmm. like. And we no longer honor the, the, uh, the act of marriage or the, 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 the role of sex in marriage. It has gone outside of that. And because man is redefining what is right and wrong, now sex outside his marriage is just fine. You know, mm -hmm. fornication is now considered to be recreational sex, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and adultery is considered to be sex between consenting adults. And as long as people use the pill and the condom, there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. it. See? But that brings on negative consequences on the whole society. We have to pay for that. That's right. Well, you, you don't stop at just the man and the wife. You dive in further into the family, into the children, and specifically teenagers. Yeah. And I love what you really, you talk about the role of the father in, in, in all of that with the kids. Yeah. Because he, with that role of father, that title father, you know, if a child gets turned off to his natural father because of abuse and, and provoking that child, mm -hmm he can't like anybody or relate to anybody up there with the title of father. Mm. So the father is the representative of God in that home. And this is why God says through Solomon, don't provoke the child. You correct the child, but don't provoke him. The, the real balance here, Zach, I see with two sons and three daughters mm. of my own is how do you, uh, how do you corral the will of that child, the strong will without destroying the child's spirit? But that's what a parent has to learn to do. You got to corral that will. 
Otherwise, if you don't, there's, there's going to be trouble when they go to school. There'll be trouble when they go to the workplace. There'll be trouble with the police officer. Got to corral that will, but you can't destroy the spirit in the process. Thank you, Zach. Hear more from Bill on this topic every week on Update with Bill Harris right here on TV44. Would you like the chance to hear Bill Harris live? He'll be speaking this Sunday, June 14th at St. John's Mennonite Church in Pandora. Service times are 8.30 and 11 a.m. It's time now to talk about health. Today, we bring you part two in Dr. Trudy Peeper's series on components to natural health. Dancy Muller has more in today's Lost Creek Rehabilitation and Care Center food and health segment. Well, we recently spoke with Dr. Trudy Pieper about the four components to natural health. A, B, C, and D, we got A and B. Yes. Now we need to talk about C and D. And C is kind of an exciting one that people don't really think about. But we have to activate our healing response by affirming our faith. We have to build our immune system so we stay healthy. But C is we have to cleanse our body. And God gave us the perfect way to do that. And very few people do it. We have to fast. And that word in itself has so many definitions and yes. so many meanings to different people. So how do you define it? All right, fasting is a biblical principle that we talk about. But for in health, when you are not eating, it allows your body time to heal. When you consume a meal, it takes 68% of your energy to digest that food. It diverts energy from your body from healing. So if you take something as simple as one day a month, and you just do fasting. And I consider fasting uh, fluids, more than water, fruits and juices. So you drink fruits and juices all day long. And then when it comes time for meal time, you take that time for prayer and meditation. You get your Bible out and your devotional and you spend the, you give that time back to God. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a 24 hour period. For people who have a hard time with that, you can also do apples. So if you feel like you have to eat something, you can do four apples plus juices and you get the same benefit. So at your meal time, you're cutting up an apple and eating that slowly. So do the 24 hour fast using the fruits and juices. You will feel so much better. You'll feel closer to God and your body functions so much better. Huh. And so I just recommend one day a month. Now, if you can do it more than that and you can do it one day a week, you will be surprised how, how better you feel. If you're having some severe health problems on a regular basis, a three day fast will help you doing the same way fruits and juices throughout the day um, and, and prayer time. And the, the benefits of that are spiritual and for your health. Wow, okay. And then the last letter, D. And then D is direct support. If you know in particular that you're having some specific, specific problems, <laughs> um, particularly if you're having problem balancing your blood pressure, or you have constant high blood pressure and your medicines do not seem to be helping. Um, then you want to look and work at herbs or natural ways to help those and directly support that area. And rather than doing a shotgun approach where you try to tackle everything that's wrong, you pick what's one that's giving you the most problems or it seems to be most important to you. So with blood pressure, as an example, you have to do the basics. You have to reduce your salt. You have to eat more vegetables. You have to reduce your weight. And you need to exercise regularly. If that's not doing it, then there's some little tips that you can do that will help. Almonds, raw almonds, a handful of those every day will help um, the arterial walls, will, um, they, they open them up so that the blood can flow more freely through there and helps with lower your blood pressure. K uh, cayenne pepper. Now, unless you're, you're a freak for heat no. and you really like that, <laughs> I can't you say probably that. only do this once or twice, but it is the quickest way to lower your blood pressure is to take cayenne pepper, a teaspoon of that, and some warm water with a little honey and chug that, and you will lower your blood pressure, but I think you only do it once or twice. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Coconut water is rich in electrolytes and has been proven drinking on a daily basis will lower your blood pressure. Vitamin D, this was an interesting Studies have shown that people who do not have natural sunlight on a regular basis have higher blood pressure. Okay, so yeah. just by being outside 15 minutes a day, you can help lower your blood pressure. I believe that. I believe that affects well, our Well, when people go on vacation, they're taking a sunny vacation, they're walking the beach and they feel so much better, you know, they know that they're being relaxed. But part of that is the sunshine. I believe Is that. helping the vitamin D into your system lowers your blood pressure. And uh, two others I really want to mention quickly is celery. Traditional Chinese medicine for thousands of years has used celery. 
and celery is, uh, has a phyto phytochemical in it that acts as um, a vasodilator, which opens up the, the veins and forces the, the uh, blood flow through. So it lowers your blood pressure. It also is a natural diuretic, so it takes the extra fluids out of your body. Four ribs of celery a day will significantly lower your blood pressure. So it's glass and it's foul. I'm not letting I you know yet. Know. Yes. So have, have you figured it out yet? Maybe have they're you ahead guessed? of me. I hope. I hope they're ahead of me because I don't. Jingles. Ooh, listen. I got a turkey don't platter. Don't break it. Don't break it. Don't break, break it. There's it. two items in here. Did I tell you there's two items? I don't think you told me that. All right. We'll, we'll unveil it in just a bit. <laughs> Don't forget, though, you've just watched day or part two of Dr. Trudy's four components to natural health. Well, you want to reread those things over and over again or watch them again. Of course, you can watch them anytime on WTLW.com. Click on Faith and Friends. You can even post them to your Facebook page, email the link to others so that they can also gain the knowledge. Well, speaking of the knowledge of Dr. Trudy, we've been telling you about her new book, Prevention is the Cure to Cancer, Five Easy Steps. And now we want to tell you how you can get your own copy about this book, of this book. All you need to do is send a gift to TV44 for $100 or more, and include in that gift a note that you would like to receive Prevention is the Cure to Cancer. As Dr. Trudy Pieper gives some very easy, some very common sense approaches to preventing cancer, including just positive thinking. Maybe you already read about in the June at Take One newsletter. The statistics about cancer are quite staggering and only predicted to get worse, but if you could do something to help prevent cancer, you would. And that's where Dr. Trudy's new book can serve as a guide. As a thank you to you, our viewers, those who donate 100 or more in the month of June will receive your own copy of Prevention is the Cure to Cancer. Just request the book at the time of your donation. Any questions, feel free to call us here at TV44 at 419-339-4444. A lot of great thank you gifts this month of June. Don't forget the Joyce Meyer conference tickets and the Day of Discovery thank you packages. All in all, thank you for your financial support of TV44 in the coming summer months. And if you'd like the opportunity to partner with us financially every month without having to write out a check and think about it, uh, making that payment. Did I do it this month? Did I do it? I can't remember last month. Consider signing up for our automatic withdrawal program. It's a monthly withdrawal. You can email us for more information. You believe so much in the ministry of TV44 and how we are reaching into our community that you want to be on board each and every month. We want to make it easy for you. Well, maybe you want to partner with us by giving donations to our auction. Of course, that provides you a tax deductible receipt as well and is an incredible blessing to us as that auction is such an important one day fundraiser for our ministry. The auction is September 12th, but we are expecting donations now. And as we've been telling you all throughout the show, <laughs> unveil it. We've already got some donations. What is it? What is, what is it? it? Well, well, first of all, we actually have the, the bag. People are going to get the bag. Oh, you don't seem excited about the bag. Awesome. Another bag. <laughs> so there's going to be things in the bag that you're going to want. Like is this like curtain number one, curtain number two, or the bag? <laughs> Here's, here's the thing. If you come to the auction and you get the bag, that means you've also won a great giveaway prize like the, a Cedar Point trip or a Putin Bay trip or something that's going to actually take you to the Lake Erie area. And you'll also win this cool book, Lake Erie's Shores and Islands. But that's not the glass item we were talking about. That is not no. the glass item. We were I can hardly hey, stand sand. it. Open the bag. There is sand in here. Oh, really? <laughs> well, in the pictures. I could have brought some back from Sandusky. Okay, here it is. Are you ready? I've been ready for dun, minutes. Da, da, da. They're, they're not even reacting with like amazement or excitement. Is Come it on. Shaped like a turkey? It's a chicken or a goose. <laughs> <laughs> it it is? is an item that has been donated to our auction. It does look kind of like a goose. <laughs> is it? Is it a? The sand in that. Okay, so <laughs> this is one of the items that's been donated to us. We are ready for plenty more. We'll oh, have fun with them here. We'll put on it in the TV. bag, and I will guess <laughs> incorrectly again. Before we close, one final look at our scripture talking about family. Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5 tell us Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring, a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. 
big families, it's something we've gotten away from in modern society, but uh, it's certainly you can be a source of much joy, much amusement, much strength from the family. Not just your biological family, but also the family in Christ. No about it. Yeah. We hope you have those people to reach out to and to be around. And if you don't, certainly give us a call at the station. We'd love to connect you with the local church or a body of believers that is uh, active and can reach out to you as well. All right, well, for all of us here at TV44, thank you for being with us on Faith and Friends. Don't forget, auction donations can be dropped off Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Lots of great thank you gifts for your wonderful summer donations for this summer. Thank you for your partnership all in all. Have a great week, everyone.